Well, hi everybody, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Yesterday I released a video on P-Brain and his confusion on the rotation of the Earth and his arguments from incredulity. Normally I wouldn't do two videos back to back on the same person, but boy, he came out with a whopper today. I took this photograph over the northern end of Lake Michigan last weekend. It's uh, of a sunset, and there's a unique phenomenon evident here. It's called a sun pillar. You see that ray of light that goes straight up from the sunset? That's not artifact. That's what it actually looked like. And as you can see, the bottoms of the clouds are clearly lit up by this sunset. Now, as that famous flat earth scientist Phuket Word has pointed out, on a flat earth, the sun would never be below the clouds and it could never light up the bottom side of the clouds. P-Brain's going to try and show how this can be done by perspective. Okay, the reason the undersides of the clouds are lit up is because the clouds are higher than the sun appears to be from your perspective on the ground. Meaning it's you have your perspective matrix here, your perspective structure, I like to call this. The convergence point of this structure, which is also your horizon, is visually a few miles away, and the sun is sitting there on the ground. And that okay, one of the major weaknesses with the flat earth movement is their total misunderstanding of perspective. Now, this is actual real perspective here. Now, as you see, we have a fence on the uh, right side of this photograph, and the eye level is at the second rail, and it's marked with a white arrow. Now, if you look at an object that is above your eye level, such as that sun up there, even though if you look at it from the side, it's moving along the same direction, as it moves away from you, it starts sinking towards your convergence point. But a couple of things you should notice, uh, it never goes below your eye level, and of course, the sun will get smaller the further away it gets. Now contrast that with this silliness where flat earth perspective the object starts over your head and then works its way down and because the sun sets below the uh, level of the horizon it has to go below your eye level. If you look at the very top of this pyramid you'll see the sun and between the observer and the sun is this level of clouds. In real perspective that level of clouds will always be between the observer and the sun which is high in the sky. One of the hallmarks of real perspective is that objects never cross lines of perspective. perspective. Now remember, this is just the illusion of reflected light between the observer and the light source. No observer present, and this doesn't even take place. That's a head scratcher in itself. It's kind of like if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, does it make a sound? Well, it only makes a sound if you have apparatus to perceive it. You know, you know this is such a classic flat earth fallacy. Uh, an attitude that I've actually got to stop the tape right now and talk about this for a minute. If an object falls in the woods, unless there is a flat earther there to hear it, it does not make a sound. Does that make any sense to anybody? If an object falls in the woods and creates a sound, that is a sound wave. Sound is sound. Light is light. Energy is energy. It is not dependent on you being there to personally observe it. This disconnect between understanding the process involved and the ability to personally observe it is why Flat Earth is not science. Science has the ability to understand the process and say unequivocally, yes, if a tree falls in the woods, it will make a sound. It doesn't matter whether or not you, Mr. P. Brain, are there to hear it. Perceive it. So it's kind of like the sun and the light. Uh, you need eyes and you need consciousness to be able to receive this stuff, to perceive this stuff. Okay, the clouds are lit up, and specifically the underside of the clouds are lit up because they are acting as a mirror or reflective surface. And none of this, like I said, is real. It's just a reflection. For instance, look at these two guys standing on the shore. The guy on the right sees the water lit up between himself and the sun. The guy on the left, standing a few feet away, also sees the water lit up between himself and the sun. But the guy on the right does not see the lit up portion between the other guy and the sun, and vice versa. This guy doesn't see his water lit up. So the lit up water isn't real. 
It's just a reflection. Just like when you see yourself in a mirror, and you aren't actually in the mirror, and someone else standing at a different angle to the mirror who looks in the same mirror at the same time may not see you in it at all. They may. Congratulations, Mr. Peabrain. You've discovered that the reflection in the mirror isn't really you. Most of us figured that out when we were about three. So when you see the clouds lit up, they're not actually lit up. They're reflecting the sunlight, and that reflected sunlight is unique to the observer. Peabrain, you make a point on the ray of light along the surface of the water between you and the sun. You can even say that you make a point in the clouds directly above you. But look to your right and left. What's lighting those clouds up? Uh, a viewer on the other side looking toward the shore may not even see the red water. It all depends, you know, where you're located. Um, definitely the orange under the clouds there, that's all. So now to prove that the underside of the clouds being lit is in fact a perspective issue, let's go up. <music> The sun rises with us because the sun's on the horizon, and the horizon always stays level with your eyes. So the clouds now are going to start going down and get lower and lower below you, right? So now from your perspective, as you look, the tops of the clouds are lit up. And if you could see the bottoms of the clouds, they would not be lit up. Okay, that's about it for him. Uh, rather than let him continue on with this silliness, let's just kind of sum it all up. The sun is above the clouds. The top of the clouds will be lit. If the sun is poking below the clouds because it's setting and it's lower than the cloud deck, the bottom of the clouds will be lit. Like the tree in the woods, it is not dependent on where your observation level is. It has to do with where the light is striking the clouds. The mere fact that sunlight can strike the bottom of clouds proves the spherical earth. This rabbit hole's too deep.